Now folks, let's run with Ideal. In this video, I'm going to step you through every feature and function of the 61-337 auto ranging digital multimeter here from Ideal. Now folks, when you first buy the tester, you'll also get a nice carrying case that you can store it in, as well as a certificate of conformance. And all Ideal testers have that certificate, which means that the tester was tested during its manufacturing, and then it meets or exceeds our published accuracy specifications. It also has a serial number of the tester on it, as well as the serial number at the back of the tester. And you'll need that serial number if you ever have any warranty issues. You'll also get an instruction manual, and please fully read and understand the instruction manual before you use the tester. You also get a set of test leads to make measurements with, as well as a K-type thermocouple to make temperature measurements with. Now, before we get started using the tester, I want to show you some features. One is here is that the tester is, uh, on this input here, says it's CAT3 rated for up to 600 volts. We can safely use it in CAT3 testing environments up to 600 volts. We can also measure amperage, AC or DC, up to 10 amps, and the tester comes with a 4,000 count display, which we'll get into in a minute. Note the UL trademark on the back of the meter for US and Canada. This mark indicates that the meter has been tested by UL and is certified to meet the applicable UL and IEC standards. The CE mark and the triangle with the check mark indicate that this meter also meets the European and Australian directives. You'll also see here the fuses that go in the tester are listed right on the back of the tester. We've also incorporated probe holders into the back of the tester so you can store your probes when not using the tester. You can also mount them in the higher position here if you're doing some two-handed testing. You also see in the middle of the top of the tester a mount here for a hanging strap which is sold separately and we can hang the tester from a nail screw or a magnetic surface if we care to and that is magnetic as well. And again, the, the hanging strap is sold separately. The tester also has a kickstand that we can use to stand the tester up while we're taking our measurements. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that kickstand uh, slash battery cover and to, so you can see the inside of the tester. Now, folks, anytime you remove this battery cover, Never use the tester to actually make any measurements. Always have the battery cover on it to make measurements. You'll see in the middle here we have three AAA batteries. There's a little legend right in the back of the tester that tells you how to mount the batteries in properly. Uh, you also see two fuses in the back of the tester. The fuses are there for making current or amperage readings. If you blow a fuse or a fuse is missing, all the functions on the tester still work except for amperage. And this fuse here is for the milliamp and microamp settings. The other fuse is for up to 10 amps. And I'll show you a nice feature of these new testers. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the tester to milliamps. You'll notice that we first get a lead warning letting me know that the red lead is either missing or it's in the wrong port. And if I plug it over here for voltage, it still gives me that lead warning. Amperage, I still get that lead warning. It's wanting me to plug it into the milliamp setting because I'm in milliamps. But now I get the fuse warning letting me know the fuse is blown or missing in the tester. So that lead and fuse warning is a nice feature of these new testers. And as always, anytime you need to replace or replace those fuses, make sure you replace it with the proper fuse. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this battery cover uh, back on it and actually start taking some measurements. Now, one feature of the tester you might want to disable occasionally is that when you first turn the tester on, you'll see in this display APO, which stands for Auto Power Off. The tester will automatically power itself off after 30 minutes of not being used, but you can disable that. Say you want to make some, a reading of some temperatures over a longer period of time than that, you can disable it by turning the tester off, pressing and holding the select button, turning it back on, and you notice the APO function has been disabled. And to re-enable it, just turn it off and turn it back on, and APO is back in the display. Now before we start making some measurements, I want to point out some other things here, and that is that on these test leads, I have re removed 
these little protective caps in order to be able to plug it into my power supply here in a moment. Anytime you remove these protective caps and you expose these metal tips, you are now limited to using the tester in a CAT2 env testing environment or down. No longer safe to use the tester in a CAT3 testing environment. So always make sure you replace those protective caps and you do not lo lose them because you need them for CAT3 testing environments. Now you also notice that the tester is uh, giving us a reading. It's an AC voltage. It's reading millivolts. These testers are capable of measuring down to into a thousandth of a volt. And you'll see a fluctuation on the display and a little bit of a reading. Nothing's wrong with the tester. It has to do with the resolution of the testers. And these test leads on the tester are essentially acting like small antennas. And they are picking up radiated electrical energy off electrical sources like the uh, wiring in the walls here, uh, the power cords on top of this bench, and any other electrical source. And you'll notice if I touch the test leads together, the meter uh, does zero out and if you actually do take any measurements, that will go away as well. So if you ever see this in the testers, there's nothing wrong with the testers. It just has to do with its ability to be able to measure down into thousands of a volt and picking up stray electrical noise. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug the tester in my power supply over here. And the tester is uh, giving us a reading of a, about 322 uh, millivolts of voltage. And you'll see that we're getting that extra digit of resolution and again, the 4,000 count display, what it means is the resolution in the tester will change at 400 millivolts, 4 volts, 40 volts, and 400 volts. Now, I'm going to crank up the power supply slightly here and try and get it over 400 uh, millivolts. And we're now reading around 738 millivolts, but you'll notice the decimal point did move on us. We're still reading down into a thousandth of a volt, but the resolution did change due to that 4,000 count display. Now the next area it will change again is above 4 volts. So as we got above 4 volts, you notice the decimal point moved on us and we're now reading into hundreds of a volt. Now one nice feature of these new digital multimeters from Ideal is that if you get above 30 volts, you'll get an audible indication which you just heard. You'll also get a red LED uh, light up at the top of the tester and as well as a lightning bolt lights up in the display. This is a high voltage warning letting you know that you're above 30 volts and if you are in a cat 3 testing environment where personal protective equipment may be required you should be wearing it and anytime we're working with electrical equipment following good industry safety guidelines is always a really good idea now that resolution will change in display as we get above 40 volts and uh, there it is, and we're about 42 volts, but you'll notice the resolution changed on us and we're now reading down to a tenth of a volt. Now the resolution will change again at 400 volts, but my power supply does not go that high. However, I will crank it up to about 100 volts and show you some other nice features of this tester. So here we're reading right around 100 volts, and one of those features you might be interested in is this delta or relative button. We can use that function on AC and DC voltage or amperage, capacitance, temperature, and resistance. And it allows us to compare two different readings and the difference between them. So if I hit the relative button one time, it stores the 100 volts it's actually reading. And I'm going to crank the power supply up about another 20 volts here. <clears throat> and it's giving me the difference between the 100 volts it was reading a moment ago and the uh, 120 volts is actually now reading. And it's giving me the difference between two, those two values. And if I hit the relative button once, it disables that, and sure enough, the tester is reading about 120 volts. Another feature on the tester is the range button. You'll notice the, the display says auto. The tester automatically goes into auto ranging when you uh, turn the tester on, so you don't have to set the range, but we could if we want. And we can use the range function on AC and DC voltage or amperage and resistance. If I hit the range button one time, it turns it off. And it's in the proper range, so it's still giving us that same reading. Now, the next range up is up to 1,000 volts. Now, the tester is only capable of going up to 600 volts, but it did put the zero in the display above in front of the 120. Uh, and if I hit the range button again, it'll go into the smallest range on the tester, which is down into millivolts. And it gives me the OL or over limit in the display indicating I'm not in the correct range because millivolts is much smaller than the 120 volts the tester is actually reading. 
The next range is 4 volts, and again, I get the same results. The next range above that is 40 volts, I get the same results, and it's not until I hit into the 400 range that I get the proper reading on the tester again. And we can re-enable range by pressing and holding down the range button, and it goes back into auto ranging. <clears throat> the tester also has a hold button. If I press hold, H comes up in the display, and the tester will hold the last reading it saw before you disconnected it from this power source. And we can use the hold button on all the functions in the tester, including resistance and capacitance and voltage and amperage. Now, and if we press the hold button one more time, that goes away. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug the tester back into the power supply and show you another feature of the tester, which is measuring frequency or hertz. Uh, you'll see the tester has HZ in the display, standing for hertz. And AC waveforms here in the United States are 60 hertz, and so sure enough, the tester is giving us a reading of about 60 hertz. We can also measure duty cycle by pressing the select button one time. We get a, uh, a percent symbol in the display. And an AC waveform has roughly a 50% duty cycle, which it is. Now, we can measure fre frequency from 10 hertz up to about 10,000 hertz, and duty cycles between 0.1% upwards of 99.9%. Now, I'm going to disconnect the tester from the AC waveform, and I'm going to use this little printed circuit board that I can demonstrate how to measure some of the other functions on the tester. And that one of those is DC voltage. So if I hit the select button once, we get the DC in the display. There are two one and a half volt AAA batteries wired in series on this test on this test board that are putting out right around three volts of DC uh, voltage, which we would expect with two one and a half volt batteries wired in series. Now I can also by take, turning the tester to this function here, I can measure co uh, uh, continuity, resistance capacitance and diodes. Now, you'll see there's an audible symbol in the display here. If I touch the test leads together, the, the meter uh, basically zeroes out. You get the audible tone as well as the red LED lit up, indicating good continuity. That tells me that the test leads are working on the tester and the meter is working properly as well. And we can measure uh, uh, continuity on uh, motor windings, fuses, switches, all kinds of devices. And we'll get this indication <clears throat> anytime the tester is measuring under 10 ohms of resistance. Now, I happen to have four resistors wired in parallel on this little test board that in parallel read a little under 6 ohms, and that's how come I'm still getting the indication for continuity because we're under the 10 ohms. If I hit the select button once, the tester goes into uh, measuring just resistance, and if I go across those same four resistors, I still get that reading of a little under 6 ohms but I don't get the audible tone or, or the red LED light to light up. Now, here are those same four resistors wired in series. The tester says 0.7 kilo ohms, or roughly 700 ohms. Because of the resolution of the tester changed at 400 ohms, we get that 0.7 kilo ohms. If here's just one resistor that is about 375 ohms, and since we're under the 400 ohm setting of the resolution of the tester gives us that extra digit of, uh, of resolution in the display. Now if I hit the select button one time, you'll see NF pops up in the display up here standing uh, for farads and we can measure capacitance. There is a small capacitor on the board that we go across. The tester is reading now roughly a little over uh, nine or roughly eight and a half uh, microfarads, and that's roughly a 10 microfarad capacitor on the board. We can also measure diodes by hitting the select button one time, and you see the little symbol pops, uh, triangle symbol pops up in the display. And a diode is a simple uh, device, it's a semiconductor that allows current to flow through it only in one direction only. And it's a very common device, and if I go across it, the diode on the board, I get a reading of about 6.6 .6 volts You'll notice that if I reverse the polarity on the test leads, I get no reading at all. And again, a diode is good when we get a reading in one direction only. Now we can also measure temperature with the tester by going to the temperature setting. Now we have to remove these test leads and install the K-type thermocouple. And the K-type thermocouple has a positive and negative on it. 
and make sure the red goes into the uh, positive port on the, on the tester. And the uh, thermocouple is picking up the temperature in the room, which is around 78 or 9 uh, 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 um, degrees. If I touch the, test, uh, the tip of the thermocouple, you can see, sure enough, that the temperature is rising. Then we can measure temperature from minus 40 to a little over 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, although this K-type thermocouple is limited to like 220 degrees. We'd have to get a different thermocouple if we're going to measure something much higher than that. Now I can also measure amperage, DC amperage, with the, the little board. There is an LED on the board that if I go across the LED, the tester actually completes the circuit and we're measuring a little over or a little under 11 milliamps of DC current and you'll notice that the LED on the board is lit up. Now if I, here's the, the same LED with a little resistor wired in series with it, we're now reading a little under 3 milliamps and you'll notice the intensity on the LED has gone down. And if you are making current readings, if you are making microamp current readings, you can leave the tester part of the circuit for up to 10 minutes. On milliamps, up to one minute, and in amperage, up to 10 seconds before potentially blowing the fuse in the tester. Now last, I'm going to show you the non-contact voltage capabilities of these testers. You'll notice the non-contact voltage sensor is right here in the very middle and the top of the tester. And if I move an extension cord across that, it does sense the hot conductor in that extension cord. However, these testers do not quite operate like you would expect one of these voltage sticks to operate. You'll notice that if I plug or if I hold the tester up against the triple tap here, I really don't get any reading at all, and that is because of the extra insulation around this tap and the extra insulation around the top of the tester. Where one of these voltage sticks, if you turn them on, the sensor is right here at the very tip that can be inserted into that uh, slot on the receptacle, or in this case, that, that triple tap, and it's indicating voltage. However, by using the red lead on the tester, I could insert the red lead into the hot conductor, and the tester does give me that uh, indication that voltage is present, and we can measure voltage between 40 up to 600 volts, and I get no indication in the neutral slot or in the hot slot, just in the hot conductor, or in the, okay? So no reading in neutral, no reading in ground, and just in the hot conductor. There you have it, folks. That is the Ideal 61-337 auto ranging digital multimeter from Ideal. And as always, please read and fully understand the manuals before actually using the testers. Hey, I'm Ron with Ideal. I'll see you on the next one.